Good afternoon, everybody. You all must be wondering, who's this old guy and what will he lecture us on now? Well, I'm not going to stand here today and say I'm not like other old people, because I kind of am. However, I managed to retain a very important skill that I thought was useless in high school, and that's getting you to immerse yourself in my stories by relating them to sacrificial graces. No, I won't put all of you in a time machine and take you with me to the day I was born, but I mean, you all signed up for this, so I might as well try my best to bring you guys on some sort of excursion into my mind. Let's start with one of those chaotic, patrimonium filled years of my life. 2020. That year was, in very broad terms, the most memorable year of my life. Why? Because everything about it was bad. For the first time in my life, I was going to have to undergo and experience a global pandemic. March 13th, 2020 came around and COVID-19 became the IT talk for the entirety of three years. Let's start with everything shutting down, people going crazy over how they're going to get food or even if they'll keep their jobs. Parents are worried about their kids and if they really are going to go back to school in two weeks. We did it. Anyway, we go into quarantine and the whole world turns silent. Nobody's throwing parties, nobody's traveling, nobody's going to school, nothing. And that's what hit me the hardest. Not being around the people I loved absolutely haunted me. I hated being alone in my room and on my phone all day. Sure, I played Xbox here and there, but it was at the time a 10 year old concept, so I couldn't, so there's not much I could have played. I was alone, trapped, and scared. However, websites like Zoom and Google Meet, this is not an advertisement, made my COVID experience just a little bit better. I was able to do a few things that I loved in the comfort of my home, but online. Doing karate online and seeing all my friends' faces for the first time in weeks, having extremely long late night FaceTime calls with all my school friends, and even be able, being able to FaceTime and talk to my then girlfriend. I was able to feel a sense of community. That's, this wholesome feeling finally made me happy the first time since COVID started. Because of these experiences, I find myself praying more often and f after finding this grace of community. All right, we need to get to a happier note. Let's skip ahead 20 years, June of 2040. That year is one of the, my favorite years and months of my life. Not because I turned 33 that month, but because I met my best friend. For context, I had just signed a record deal with Sony Music and was leaving their office in LA. I walked down the hall and waited for the elevator. While I was waiting, this guy came up to me and said hi. And since I'm just an amazing human being, I nodded my head and smiled. We both go into the elevator and we're both coincidentally going to the first floor. And then after like 30 seconds max, it stops. I frantically press buttons to try to get the elevator door to open and nothing. Me and this stranger I absolutely know nothing of are now stuck in an elevator. After like a minute or two, we broke the silence and started chatting. His name was Salvador, which means savior in English. Anyway, to keep a very dramatic and long story short, somehow we became best friends in the 25 minutes that we were stuck in the elevator. When we were free from that tiny box, we didn't just say, okay, well, see ya. Nope. Instead, we went out to the super fancy restaurant that he literally owned. All I can say about that restaurant is it was the best Mexican food I've ever eaten from a fancy restaurant. To think we went from sitting in a broken elevator for 25 minutes to now co-owning the record label I was once signed under with my best friend who's sitting somewhere in that crowd is amazing. Our friendship has definitely had its ups and downs, but one thing is for sure, and that is the lesson of having fidelity. While we've both done things that we may have exactly not been the best decision at the time, we fought through it. We stay loyal to each other through any single impediment that we face, in, for example, in buying out sunny music or going to Disneyland together with our families. We've been through all the jovial and harrowing moments together, and even though we're not married, we've presented aspects of our proper Christian matrimony and no Salvador, I don't want to get married. I have one more story for y'all, and this is probably the most impactful and emotional one, so be prepared. It was the year 2063, and I was 56 years old. This was probably also one of the worst years of my life, as it was a year that, in January, I had lost my mother, and around five days after my 56th birthday in June, my father passed away. To think I was barely halfway through the year and I already lost my two best friends in the entire world, it almost felt fake. I had no words, no thoughts, no emotions, nothing. I put everything on hold. I left Salvador in charge of sunny music. I had stopped going outside. I had locked myself inside of our house for days. Specifically, I locked myself in my bedroom. I didn't want to interact with anyone, even my wife and kids. I just wanted to be alone. What made it worse is that I started taking up drinking. I was in such a harrowing and dark period in my life that I couldn't even recognize who I was anymore when I looked in the mirror. The press and the whole world thought I was dead. And it felt like I might as well have been. My parents were the reason I'm standing here telling every one of you this story. Eventually, my wife Esperanza got tired of me seeing, got tired of me being so depressed. So she called the one person that could actually understand me, Father Garcia. We had attended his church every Sunday for three years, and we were basically best friends next to Salvador. So when he came and I felt nothing, I knew something was wrong. He told me it's okay to be mad at the world but that I had to think about my parents seeing me in my situation. 
did I really want them to see me like this? All depressed and gloomy and not living the life that they helped build for me? He blessed me, and after he took his hands away from my head, I felt like a new person. Father Garcia was essentially reincarnated Jesus that had pulled me out of a depressive stage in my life. After our talk, slowly but surely, my life went back to normal, and no amount of thank yous would ever be sufficient enough for him. He was responsible for bringing, my, for bringing me back to a fruitful and holy life. Unfortunately, I have run out of time, not in my life, but in this conversation. I hope every single person in this hall takes at least one of my three stories to heart today and realize how sacramental your life is and that in both big and small moments, Jesus will always find a way into them. Thank you.